everybody. Welcome to another es- edition of XGR. In the morning. All right. And as you heard, joining us is Chris, a.k.a. The Mole. Hello. And because uh, you may notice that uh, Anastasia is not here, she is doing a live stream of something. And uh, so to replace her, we have special guest, The Fallen Angel. Yo. And I am, of course, the stay-at-home dad gamer, not the stay-ahead dad gamer. But um, so first up, as always, we will start with the news. Chris, take it away. Okay. The first news, this is kind of oldish, but I wanted to discuss this. Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z has been announced. First bit of thing I want to just get out the way. Hate the title. <laughs> Dragon Ball Battle of Z. Yes, Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z. No. I understand the battle of because it's they want to draw in fans who are excited for Battle of the Gods. It works. Super Saiyan God Goku's in it. I just don't like that name. But the big feature with this game is there's going to be four up to four players can play co-op online in a matchup at the same time. So you get like you can have like Goku, Krillin, Piccolo, Gohan, and stuff all on one team against like Frieza and his minions and stuff. Which it changed. That that's a kind of a big game changer in my opinion. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Yeah, that that actually sounds really cool. I remember. Um... I uh, because I think you're on the same team, right? And the last uh, Dragon Ball Z game I remember with that, I bet there was one afterwards, but there was the one on the Sega Saturn, which I think was called Ultimate Battle 22, where you could have like three people on a team and you could do multiplayer like co-op in that. You're so. you're wrong, but close. Oh. Ultimate Battle 22 or 27 when you entered the cheats didn't have that feature. But the one that did, which came around the same era, was Dragon Ball Legends, the one where, like, if you wanted to get, like, Android 16, mm-hmm. you had to let him kill Goku. So he was like, okay, I've completed my mission. I'm now good now. Oh, really? I thought the Saturn one had uh, multiplayer with the teams where it, you had the three versus three or whatever. It, it may have, but the one that did it, the, the two that have done it the most, the, the two that did it were Legends and... That new one that's in the arcade, or what's it called, like Zen Battle, mm. whatever it's called. Okay. Which, yeah, which does look pretty cool. There is also one other little bit of news to mention. Mm-hmm. Um, before I mention this, I know you can probably hear us. I'm just going to start off by saying, "Hi, Marcus." <laughs> Officially, Spike have been dethroned. <gasps> the people making this is a new group. Because they, because Bandai quoted that the series of Budokai Tenkaichi games were like with the last one stuff just weren't selling anymore, so they've moved on to the new guy, thank, new ones, thank God. And people were like, "How did they last more than the ones that made Budokai?" Turns out they didn't, because the ones that make Budokai are currently making the arcade game. <laughs> just thought, I'd, but I'd throw out it's like a new people making it, which this is the first time we've had a new. But the important thing is with it being a new person making it is it's not going to be the Budokai style. It's not going to be Budokai Tenkaichi style. It's actually going to be something different. And yeah, that, that, that was that news. That might be cool. Uh, my second bit of news, which I think the Fallen Angel will have seen this one too, which I'll let him discuss this one a little bit more if he wants. WWE 2K14 poster, well, cover and trailer were revealed yes they were and it it surprisingly it actually looks better than WWE uh, yeah WWE 13 yeah um the um just from the trailer that we saw um I think the um uh now I gotta think of the word again um I can't remember what the word is. Um, all, all the movements and everything. It, Animation? It, it flows really nicely. Mm. It does. They also showed off a couple of cool features in there. I'm not sure if anyone noticed that. Yeah, not, well... Not much. One, of mm-hmm. <laughs> one possible one. <laughs> One possible one and one that doesn't look like it is one. 
we had Ryback lift two guys on top of himself and do the shell shock to two guys at once. But people don't know if that's actually going to be a feature on the part of the story because they did look really generic CAW looking ones, like it's Ryback the local talent. <laughs> which, if I was annoyed last year that X Pac and people like that made the cut and some of the existing wrestlers didn't, imagine how annoyed I'm going to be if local talent <laughs> makes it. <laughs> So is does Ryback get a road to the mid card story mode or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> feed me, mom, and every time you feed him, mm, better than mama. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> that may be one of the worst references ever. That needs to be the alternate cover. <laughs> is like Ryback cooking mama. <laughs> uh, but the second feature is it. We it's hard to tell if it was a reverse or not. But HBK sort of does like a pancake toss in the air to Macho Man, then does sweet your music to him in the air. So is that like a variation of the catch finishes or moves from any position where you can now throw him into the air and just do your finisher anyway? That would be really cool. Like, especially with, like, a big dude, you, like, toss him up and just RKO him. Like, that that would look even more painful than just catching him out of the air. <laughs> like, you just throw him up and just bam. Yep. That'd look awesome. What did you think about that bit, uh, Fallen Angel? Um, I mean, it, it looks really good, um... It's definitely going to be different um, than past games um, because of new creators, but um, it, I think it may work better. It should be p- worth pointing out, Fallen Angel. The yeah. reason the graphics looked exactly the same as last year's, it's still made by Yux. They're still making the game. The same company is still making it. It's their, It's basically they were making it in 2000. When, 2k14 bought the series so nothing will have changed too dramatically it's just a new publisher at this point in order to see the real change it's probably going to be like 2015 onwards yeah because that they'd already have the base set out for 2k14 before it came over to 2k Uh, yep although one thing that should change is 2k should have better servers (laughs) <laughs> yes <laughs> yes yes they should well I don't think you can have worse <laughs> you can you can have worse servers yeah <laughs> ones that aren't there <laughs> yeah uh, but no my last and final bit of news Warhammer 40,000 Eternal Crusade has been announced for Xbox One PS4 and PC by the end of 2015 they said it's going to be a brutal melee combat over the shoulder shooter basically where you and your friends play as space marines elder orcs or chaos they've also said which will some which will amuse some people you can customize your character as they progress unlocking customization items as expected however you'll also be able to use rhinos battle wagons and other vehicles in what they're calling quote genuinely challenging procedural content <laughs> okay I don't know if that game would interest anyone <laughs> yeah, well, no that, really. that final statement sounds like marketing got a hold of it <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I really like the 40k universe so I'd at least be interested to check out the game although it sounds like it's probably a like multiplayer third person shooter almost but yeah, from yeah. the sounds of it, it looks like it's going to be basically that Space Marine game, which was similar to the mm. Gears of War game. But right. from what other people have said, I believe it wasn't quite. It wasn't as good as Gears of War. However, no. it was like it was like <laughs> Gears. Yeah, it was like Gears of War. I can imagine it basically being that meets the Defiance MMO. That would be really cool, actually, if there was like a lot of if it was like that. Because yeah, I like Defiance and the Warhammer like 40k it. game was okay. I would. Well, you I, have to. Hmm? You have the defiance MMO. 
No, I played the beta and I like. Ah, I was gonna, so hoping we could play. Jewish I know. Room. Soon, I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to get it, but <laughs> but um, with uh, one of my problems with the Warhammer 40k game is I am a longtime Eldar player, so you know, and I'm like, if you want to take a unique race from the Warhammer 40k universe to make a game about, yeah, go with Space Marines. No, that makes like. <laughs> Every game has space marines. That, that they're like the generic crappy race. Like every other race except Imperial is more interesting than them, and they always focus on them to make a game. Like, oh, let's put humans in it. I want to play yeah, humans. Be, <laughs> yeah, the other races are more interesting. However, they can use like you said for space marine because, and this isn't an insult to them. Other a lot of shit loads of games have space marine type people. Yeah. From you got your, you got the good ones like Halo. I mean, I'm not a fan, but I know it's meant to be a good one. And then you got your bad ones, like Haze. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like, yeah, they, they use them. They use those tropes too often. Yeah. And I mean, uh, well, like one of the signatures of Warhammer 40K is the chainsaw sword, but Eldar use that too. But Eldar have guns that shoot shuriken. That's way cooler than a normal gun. Yep. <laughs> Well, I will also say one thing that I think may be a problem with the Warhammer games. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you'd agree with this or not. They never get the budget that they sh that they need to just polish them up. Yeah. So like, I played that Space Marines game and I could tell parts that just weren't finished. And the reason for this seems to be, and I don't mean this in a bad way, they don't seem to sell as much of them outside of places like the UK. I mean, they sell some in America and stuff, but... Like the UK, like for example, in my city, we have a Games Workshop store called Games Workshop just for these figures. Whereas in the US, they're not quite as big. People are going to look like, oh, look, it's a look. This is a game where it basically looks like Gears of War with Halo armor. Pass. Yeah, it's over here. It's very hard to find Games Workshop games, and I think one of the problems is. Uh, for you know why they don't sell well is also they look like imitators when in a lot of cases warhammer 40k kind of started the space marine thing so yeah. uh i i think you were talking about this on um on uh, the last uh around the pound where like sometimes the thing that is derived from it looks like the originator because that's what got famous and people see this other thing that actually started it and they're like oh they're just copying and you're like no that's what started it. yep <laughs> they're copying it <laughs> There was a Warhammer game out I kind of wanted, but it never came out on PS3, sadly. I had the DS version. Oh, what? I wanted Blood Bowl. Mm. But I didn't really like the DS one, because I was ironically like the actual board game, which, <laughs> no problem if you like the board game and stuff, that's cool. Like my, my brother plays them, and he enjoyed that. However, personally speaking, what I was looking for was, apparently the 360 one was basically Madden-style graphics, and it played like, like, do you remember Monster League Football on the yes. old Mega Drive Genesis? Yes. I've wanted another game like that so bad. That game's awesome. <laughs> I am so bad at the Blood Bowl board game. Just, <laughs> oh, man. Like, I, I used to play that with my friend, and I, I, I think we played like five times, and I lost four out of five times. Yeah, it's because you keep trying to cheat, and your friend keeps having to scream at you. You can't use your Get Out Jail free card. <laughs> Where'd you keep getting these? <laughs> no, because he, because he has the he used undead in that that freaking mummy dude is like a massively good guard. Like <laughs> you just my guys are just like tackling him and fall down, <laughs> like roll crap. <laughs> yeah, but uh, that was the end of my news. How about one of you two? Oh, so how about you, Victor? Since you're the only one with okay. news. Yep. Um, just a small thing that uh, is also kind of old. But during the Xbox reveal, uh, on one of the screens, they had a, a crackdown orb. And I think recently they uh, confirmed that that was not accidental, that it was there for a reason. Which I think would be awesome, because I really like Crackdown 1. I think that game is really good. 2 wasn't as good, but I still think it was you know, fairly enjoyable. But I would definitely be interested in looking at a third one. Even if it's on the Xbox One. <laughs> I, I had seen them, the Crackdown games, and I'll admit they looked they looked fun. I I never got I never got a chance to play it properly or you no know, or get really hyped up for it, but it, it looked like it there was something there, if that makes sense. Yeah. Well, there's definitely some. I feel that there's some influence from Crackdown in the new Saints Row, so you can 
maybe get a little taste. <laughs> that makes sense. Nice. Like the high yeah. jumps and the massive ground pounds and the gliding and stuff. Are you using that to segue, I wonder? Mm, I wonder. Uh, my next bit of news does deal with Saints Row 4. And uh, also, there uh, an Xbox Live Arcade game called State of Decay. We're both recently uh, denied classification in Australia, which as far as I've heard... Oh. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Which, as far as I understand it, means they're probably never going to be there. <laughs> Which Who sucks. cares about Australians? Wow. Well, I know that uh, State of Decay <laughs> was banned for illicit drug use, but uh, what were, why was Saints Row 4 banned? Drug use and something else which I would enjoy, very much enjoy reading to you. Go ahead. If uh, Okay, let me just try and see if I can pull it up. <laughs> Out of context, that sounds horrible. But... <laughs> oh, it's actually very much in context. <laughs> I can't seem to f- find. I had the news a second. Oh, there it is. The game, the game includes a weapon referred to by the applicant as anal, as a <laughs> alien anal probe. <laughs> The applicants state that this weapon can be shoved into enemies' backsides. The lower half of the weapon resembles a sword hilt, and the <laughs> upper part contains prong-like apparendices, you know the word, yeah. with circles that wrap around what appears to be a large dildo which runs through the center of the weapon. <laughs> when using this weapon, the player approaches a clothed victim from behind, thrusts the weapon behind, between the victim's legs, then lifts it off the ground before pulling a trigger, which then launches the victim flying through the air. <laughs> After the probe has been implicitly inserted into the victim's anus, the area around the buttocks becomes pixelated, highlighting the (laughs) aim of the weapon to penetrate the victim's anus again and again. The weapon can be used during gameplay on the enemy's characters or civilians. In the board's opinion, a weapon designed to penetrate the anus of an enemy character and especially innocent civilians constitutes visual depiction of him. of implied sexual violence that is interactive and not justified by contact and as such the game should be refused classification <laughs> one that sounds like the least practical weapon on an enemy therefore is just there to have fun <laughs> and two that's that's a pretty uh, gender in specific like weapon though like it's not one that's just violent against women it's it's equal top opportunity <laughs> Yes, but it's still sex. It's still a sex crime. Yes, it is. <laughs> which Not means, if you're the president. <laughs> which which means, unfortunately, Fallen Angel, when it comes to Saints Row Four, you guys got screwed. <laughs> the anus. <laughs> yeah, uh, but luckily, I don't really play Saints Row. So it doesn't really bother me too much. I do have some good news though, on that front, Richter. Mm-hmm. To tie in with that. I, they did mention what they're planning to do is remove the alien anal probe uh-huh. and remove the drug references from Saints Row the Four so the game can still be released. Is it another version? I don't. We're not going to lose it from the other versions, are we? No, it's just okay. going to be another version just for Australia. Gotcha. Yeah, th- those were my bits. Means, Richter, oh, yeah. Which means, Richter, the alien anal probe will not be going down under. <laughs> <laughs> that need that needs to be their official press release. That's all it should <laughs> say. <laughs> oh man. Good night, folks. No. <laughs> Admit it, the full nature of probably thinking, why do they have to join this one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that's all my news. So next, we will move on to the catch-up section. And let's uh, start with the fallen angel. Go for I it. Think. Yes. Um, what have I played this past week? Um, I've played a fair bit of um, Skyland of Giants. That was pretty good. Catching up, and I'm getting the last of my figurines today. 
to complete my collection, hopefully, uh, before Swap Force comes out. Um, hot dog for the win. <laughs> yeah, I, I got hot dog and I got um, molten hot dog. It was pretty cool. Um, I've also gotten uh, God of War Ascension and Ratchet and Clank uh, Crack in Time. Mm. So they're going to be a couple of good games over the next couple of weeks to play. Nice. For uh, uh, Skylanders Giants, <clears throat> I don't know, if, you know, I, I haven't followed it a whole lot, but uh, the Lightcore Hex figure, I... Over here, it's you get it when you pick up Swap Force, but can't you use that in Giants? Do you know? Uh, you can. Um, She's just coming out because, really late. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, okay. I think it is, um, but most of the figurines are out by now. I right. believe White Vortex is out, but mm. what it may be, it may be a Series 3 White Vortex. Oh, or like a recon that, or something? Of course. Because I know there is a light core hex in this one. Oh, well. yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, and that makes sense. It will um, force, what force? There's, um, I had a whole list the other day, but there's going to be 16 new characters, 16 swap force characters. Um, I think they said eight um, light core, and there's going to be um, 32 redesigns, I mm. think they said. Which is stupid, but, you know, <laughs> more money for that. Hey, yep. Series 3 Terrafin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially when you're like someone like me, and I collect all of them. So I, I don't know whether I'm going to collect all of them. Disney Infinity though. <laughs> I I'll be getting some. Of, uh, I'll be getting a lot of Disney Infinity. Not all of them though. I, I like with Skylanders, I'm one of those. I'll probably buy one of each type just so I can play through those types. And I'll probably buy a, probably two, actually I may have to buy two of each type the way it's working out. Mm. Because they mentioned with Disney Infinity, in order to play multiplayer in story mode you need two of this same world's characters so sense. like when i go to play with the fallen angel with that for like pirates of the caribbean one of us calling it has to be jack sparrow <laughs> the other one has to go and buy like fucking barboza or someone <laughs> then you got uh, and because uh, the start set comes with three characters but not for uh, two from one of the same world so you have to go mm -hmm. out and buy three other figures at least I saw recently over here that they had a listing for uh, the Lone Ranger figure, and I was like, wow, yes. already? <laughs> yep, they have Lone Ranger announced, they have cars announced and stuff like that, which looks awesome. I, you know which character I want, and he has no other characters from his world announced, sadly, so I'm guessing he doesn't have a playset. Who? Jack the Pumpkin King. Mm. I'm waiting for uh, like Darkwing Duck and Rescue Rangers. If they get some like 90s Disney afternoon shit, I would buy that. <laughs> <laughs> like gargoyles, yes. You get Scrooge McDuck's place that which gives you access to his bank and yes. shit loads of shit loads of credit to the spending game. Yes, I'd be like, <laughs> if I was playing that with my kid, he's like, "Who's the guy in armor?" I'm like, "No, I said dibs on Gizmo Duck. You get somebody else." <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "You're mean." I'm like, "I'm like Gizmo Duck and Darkwing Duck, not in Ducktales." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I'll, I'll go with the games I've been playing this week, then. Go ahead. Available now on my channel to see my, some of my photos and experiences, uh, and my, almost my entire experience so far. Actually, all of my experience so far. The Legend of Zelda, the Skyward Sword. Ooh. <laughs> I got that. I'm enjoying it. And I got the limited edition one with the disc. And no, I didn't buy the limited edition one because I'm a big Zelda fan. I bought it because they I, they didn't have normal edition. They had limited, <laughs> and it was only ten pound when I was there. So I was like, eh, it's cheap, why not? I've also been playing Metroid Deal for M. Again, as we've mentioned, I think we mentioned this in the past. Loved the gameplay, hate the story and the character depiction. 
I've also been playing Mario and Sonic at the Olympics, Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympics, Mario and Sonic at the London Olympics. <laughs> I have a reason for that. Stay tuned for Sonic Month. <laughs> and the last one was God of War Ascension, which is ironic because I know the Fallen Angel mentioned that a second ago. I kind of really love what one of the things they did, but they don't do it as well as it could be implemented later on, Richter. Mm-hmm. I love some of the stuff you pick up. Oh, like the, the sub weapons? Like, no, the ones that, like, I've gotten now, so I've always got these items, like the thing that heals everything around me. Like, mm. I hold up this and it can heal, oh, like, a yeah. bridge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of those are pretty clever. There is a massive glitch involved with that, which, um, on one of them, which was annoying. Because I healed this bridge, but I accidentally went too far. So the camera got locked in place. However, if you exit out the game, you could continue, and it fixes the camera. So, But what I did was I scaled it up and spent a couple of extra seconds just scaling it and reaching beyond the bridge until it said saving, so I hit a checkpoint, <laughs> then loaded in so I didn't have to look at the bridge again. <laughs> nice. But I'm enjoying that game. Some stuff could be implemented better, like I said. But so far, it's pretty, the single player is still pretty cool. Yeah, some of those uh, the pr- the puzzles with the time pendant were kind of cool, where you had to like half fix it and then move something, and then like like the the yeah, giant wheel. My favorite one with that with the my favorite puzzle in that one. Oh, sorry. Sound like we sorry sorry about that people oh. we, we would seem to be talking at the same time I didn't hear Richter I don't think oh. he heard me no so which means Skype lagged for a sec <laughs> that's fine go ahead no no you go oh um what was the last thing you heard you said some of those time puzzles with that were pretty cool and I was like I remember that's when I started to join in mm. <laughs> okay yeah where you had a where you would shift it and in the middle of it shifting from decayed to heal you would like have to move stuff like there was a the wheel of kira or whatever it's called had a lot of parts like that that was a really cool puzzle my favorite puzzle was when you had the duplicate kratos Mm. thing i don't know what that's actually called but where you had to go onto this like a treadmill that carrot goes all the way to the end hit that go off the treadmill quickly jump around, lower this crystal down into such a position that it comes down just as this thing opens up to trap it in place to shine the light through the eyes. Oh yeah, that one was crazy. (laughs) The one I did not like is the bridge going up where everything was just, okay, I go to the side, I use the Eye of Truth, I open it up, oh, now a shit ton of enemies. (laughs) And some of those enemies were annoying as it was going up. Yeah. The enemies I hate on that game, I don't mind one-on-one, but I hate it when we get more than two of those electric witches. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I, I do have... Hmm? So, yeah. so you go. I was going to say that uh, even though I wasn't that big of a fan of the combat, I love that you can use the pendant and the whatever creates the clone of them. Like, I love that you could use those in combat. I... Kind of wish you got them earlier, just because they were really cool to use. <laughs> they were. My my favorite weapon in this game so far, in terms of what it does, isn't the fire blades. Mm-hmm. I like the electric blades. Oh? Because I love when you press L2 and R2 together, he does like a Dragon Ball Z power-up of like a massive fucking circle of energy around him as you're tapping L1 and R- R1 stretches out bigger and bigger electrocuting anyone inside which I did that when I had like a swarm of enemies around me and I got like a 350 <laughs> hit combo or something ridiculous nice but that, that was my game for this week alright okay uh, so for me over the past couple weeks the two major games I guess I would say that I played was uh, Plants vs. Zombies on the PlayStation Vita. As I may have mentioned before, I think I'm one of a few people that hasn't played this game. And holy crap, dude, that game is fun. Like, <laughs> I was I was supposed to play other stuff to review it, and you know, like after every time I would have a couple minutes, I'm like, ah, maybe I'll just play Plants vs. Zombies instead. And oh my god, there's like way too much crap to do in that game. 
because there's I think over 50 levels of just the story mode, and then there's all the um, uh, like survival things you can unlock for the different. Because you know there, there's like during the day, then there's at night, then there's daytime with a pool in the middle, and nighttime with a pool and fog, and on the roof. Fucking hate those roof levels. Anyway, and um, there's like little mini games and stuff like it has a crap ton of com- uh, content for that game i don't know what it costs because i got it when it was free for playstation plus but like damn like that game's really fun have you played that fallen angel i have not unfortunately okay um <laughs> rick that have you what what's your thoughts on the e3 plans for your zombies game they showed off the third person okay. shooter uh, I actually think that looked kind of cool because it reminded me of Iron Brigade or Trenched, whatever it's called now. No, and I, hmm? actually, I was just thinking, was that one of the ones you talked about? Yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which, yeah, it it looked weird because I saw the first one, I saw this one, I'm like, wait, it's a different genre, but yeah, yeah. it works. It yeah, like, cool. I, I kind of thought, it, I was like, oh, is this going to look stupid? And, like, I had literally just started playing it, like, a week before they showed that. And I looked at it, and I was like, oh, actually, that could actually work as a third-person style, you know, uh, tower defense game. And it was funny to see the different, how they use, because there's different types of zombies you fight, like the disco zombies and the miners and stuff. And I liked, in that little gameplay thing of how they showed, uh, that they showed at least a few of the different types. It was almost boss characters. <laughs> yep. But the uh, other game I played is definitely an older game uh, for X. It's Xbox and I believe also on PS3 called Majin and the Forsaken Kingdom. And it's uh, it kind of starring rem- Boo. <laughs> starring me, <laughs> just about. <laughs> it's yeah. It's you're basically this scrawny little thief guy who frees a big monster to save the kingdom from these like inky looking. Dar- they're called the darkness, but they're like kind of inky looking <clears throat> soldiers that uh, it's like. I don't know, some kind of material that just corrupts people and whatnot. And like get... Epic Mickey? Yeah, kind of. But it, the game kind of reminds me of uh, Zelda in a few ways, where there's uh, some combat and a little bit of like light platforming and light puzzle solving and collecting and stuff. And it's overall pretty fun, but the bosses are really, really annoying. Except for the first one, that thing was stupid easy. But it's it's one of those things that hopefully gamers understand what I'm talking about. But where you understand how to beat something, but actually trying to pull it off in the game, it, you you know, there's like this disconnect of understanding it and pulling it off, and that was pissing me off because the fucking Majin, he like follows behind you, but not that closely. So when I'm trying to run away from the boss, he like sits there a couple seconds until I'm a certain distance away from him. And then the AI is like, oh, he's running. And then he goes and the bosses hit like a big range. So a lot of times they're just wailing on him while I'm trying to get him to, excuse me, move the hell away from the giant dangerous monster. And he's like, and then he like, can't, then he like, can't follow because he gets knocked over or something. And I'm like, get your big ass up and get over here. And, Oh, like this one boss that drove me crazy. He's like this big sand shark. And, you know, the, what you have to hit is in his mouth. And there's bombs everywhere. And I'm like, okay, well, I have to throw the bomb in his mouth. Now, the problem is when I have the bomb and the time I can throw it in his mouth, he's basically charging a big fireball. And I hold the bomb out and the Majin has to light it on fire. And then I have to dance around like an idiot for a second. And then I can throw it. So there's basically if he starts sucking it in, I have to light the bomb and throw it into his mouth. Like there's there's no real leeway, so you have to be really close to him. And the boss doesn't have a pattern, so you're basically holding the unlit bomb, running around, staying close enough that he'll actually do that. That you can throw the bomb in his mouth, but far enough away that you can avoid attack. Like it was just really annoying. Like I didn't die, but I was getting really frustrated. You just died on the inside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My peace and tranquility was murdered. <laughs> But yeah, that's basically what I've been playing uh, the last couple weeks. Peace and tranquility? But I thought you were the stay-at-home dad gamer. <laughs> <laughs> and now, on to the opinion segment. And uh, this month, we are talking about the... Week. Oh, sorry. This Yeah, this... <laughs> 
I suck. You're doing you're, you're yeah, IC jamming good. Yeah, I know because Jim stole the word week. So, <laughs> <laughs> so for this week, the uh, topic of discussion is the decline of local multiplayer. So anyone that would like to start, feel free. Yeah, I'll, I'll let Fallen Angel go first. Okay. Yeah, you know, if I can come up with anything. Um, I don't really play multiplayer all that much. Um, if I do, it's probably be um, uh, like worldwide multiplayer mm. with people freaking everywhere. Um, and that was mainly Assassin's Creed. And I can't wait for Black Flag. It only sucks that they're not going to have naval battles in multiplayer. <laughs> Hey, our third reviewer is excited for Assassin's for the next Assassin's Creed. That can't be right. <laughs> it looks awesome. What do you want to wear? I, I, I was making a joke because I think pretty much almost every XGR whenever Assassin's Creed mentioned, I know Anastasia Geek Girl doesn't like that game and she mentions it. The third one, yeah. Uh, I want to play the third she, one. <laughs> she can suck it. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, um, Geek Girl. <laughs> yeah, hello. Um, I haven't really had many problems with multiplayer. I haven't really played it all that much to find any problems. Um, but I think it does need a bit of a boost in some fashion. Um, if people are going to use multiplayer in games, they need to set it up correctly. They need to have the right amount of servers. They need to make sure that they've got enough for the fan base they have right. so it doesn't fuck up. <laughs> yep. Uh, see, my problem with it is, for example, look at racing games. How many got announced at E... How many of them got announced at E3? At least two. <laughs> uh, at least two or three. <clears throat> However, yeah. the question when you go over to, like, their game FAQ boards or their message boards, people are asking, does this have split screen? Which, in PS2 era, no one asked that. It was assumed split screen was a staple of the genre. Same thing with Mm. shooters. Like, who here remembers playing something like GoldenEye in split screen on the N64? Yeah. And nowadays, you get some shooters come out. Not all of them. I mean, some of the big ones do still do split screen. But they, some, of the, some of them come out and they don't have local multiplayer because they don't want to hurt the graphics of making it split screen. Mm. And I'm like, fuck the graphics. I want to play local multiplayer much more than I do online multiplayer. Yes. I mean, I'm not saying exclude online multiplayer because people are like that. But stop excluding local multiplayer. That's one of the reasons I enjoy, like I've mentioned, the Wii U game console. Because look at how many games are coming. Look at the, some of the games they announced at E3. Mario Kart, local multiplayer. Smash Brothers, local multiplayer. Mario 3D World, local multiplayer. The, uh, I think Wonderful 101 may have local multiplayer. I'm not sure about that. And um, uh, I know Sonic's meant to have local multiplayer. And then the other ones that didn't were just single player games anyway. So yeah. it's it's like that's a much better console for playing local multiplayer. And it's probably the best console in fairness to play in local multiplayer only because, like they mentioned, for example, take a game like Mario Kart that's on there. They've mentioned you can play with the game pad. You can play with the pro controller, classic control pads. Wii Remote and Chuck, I think they said. And you can also play with the Wii Remote inside the steering wheel if you choose to. I mean, they have so many options available in terms of local multiplayer. But I love the Wii U because of local multiplayer. What's one of the big reasons is I'm always a fan of sitting down next to someone and playing the games instead of being like, oh, some guy I don't know across the world. I know some people play with their friends online, which is still fine. But it's it's I've played loads of games online. It's never the same enjoyment as when you're in the same room together. Even with voice chat or anything, it's never quite the same. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm a person that if they have, you know, some kind of co-op, I would prefer both options. Like, I, I feel that should be standard, is there should be a split screen, split screen slash local and an online option. Because I miss both, like, Double Dragon Neon. Oh, man, online would have been awesome with that. But there are some games, yeah, some shooters. I don't remember if Resident Evil 5 had local. I know it had online, but um, something it like... Did. Oh, it did? Okay. Uh, something like Borderlands 2. Oh, my God. I'm so glad that that has... That, that like, the first one has split screen, because my wife and I play that a lot. And, I, you know, like, I'm not going to buy two and have her go downstairs, you know, or whatever, like, hook them up next to each other. Like, no, I, I want two on one screen. <laughs> yep. Which... <clears throat> like you said, some of those games, yeah, I don't mind having the online and local. Sometimes I can excuse it. Like I imagine in the past, take Aliens v Predator. As much as it'd be kind of fun, I really wouldn't like local multiplayer in that game. Because the game is designed with, okay, I'm a Predator. I'm now using the Predator sensors to track people and hide and I'm all stealthy completely useless if say I'm hiding on a big box <laughs> and the other person can just look up and go oh he's on a box okay as an alien or just shoot me with the gun that's not a game problem that's a person next to you problem and that is solved <laughs> with punching <laughs> hi crispy yeah. well that's why um I think the Wii U would be awesome because of the you know having the the other screen <laughs> and uh if it took off what I was actually excited about with that PlayStation 3D TV was not the 3D function, was the fact that you could have two players, both with a full screen, because it would just project this separate... Like, that That was amazing to me. I wish that's what was able to take off, and, you know, I didn't really care about the 3D. That function sounded amazing to me. I'll admit that function did sound amazing. I liked that concept. The only reason I... When I went to get a 3D TV, I didn't get that one, was when I looked at the prices and stuff like that, and I looked at the size and stuff, it's too yeah, small. it is too small. It was made for like dorm rooms, but it wasn't priced for people that live in dorm rooms. <laughs> like it was, <laughs> yeah, someone somewhere messed up on that. <laughs> yeah, and I also love the fact when I said hi, Chris, speak because he is in the conversation with when I just mute it while he's uh, while we're recording. He put a little smiley face. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like like you mentioned with that. I've mentioned. I know not many people on here may like this game. I'm not a big fan of these. But it was still fun as hell. Call of Duty on the Wii U. Oh my god, was that game so fun. Because the way it worked, I was constantly looking at the gamepad screen. And when like Crispy or my brother or someone like that was playing with us, they'd sit down, they'd hold the pro pad, they'd go at it on the TV. They'd have the full screen to themselves. And I couldn't screen peek, because in order to really peek at that, I have to put my screen down. I mean, it was hard to fucking screen yeah. peek with that. Which or you have to that, look up and people would see, you know. <laughs> it wouldn't be... You couldn't stealth do it. You couldn't stealth do it. And B, if you do it, it can cost you. Because in order to do it, you have to take your eyes off your yeah. screens. Which, it's risk v. reward with that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, as Zombie U described, they did with a single player. <laughs> but it's a case of... With that, it was awesome because we had the local multiplayer aspect of he was in the room with me. But we had the online aspect of no screen peeking. <laughs> and we and we did co-op and stuff. Like one of the strategies we I liked we used on that was when I think I was one of the ones I, I had this big shield. I placed it down in front of him and let him use his sniper and stuff around <laughs> it because I was like the big powerful guy. So we worked together, if that makes sense. But And you communicated and stuff. But it was so much better than if they hadn't had local multiplayer. Yeah. It's like if you 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 if you played on the Wii U Nintendo Land. I have a little bit, yeah. Have you seen how they set that up, like the Metroid or the Zelda one? We did the Metroid one, yeah. How awesome is that? Where you both got a different aspect without having to look at the other person's screen. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Where on the, I believe on the gamepad you're like flying around, right? Yeah, the gamepad you're in a ship. Yeah. The ground you're. Like gun and stuff like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that was that was actually pretty fun. I didn't look as cool as I thought I would in a Metroid power suit, but that's okay. <laughs> you looked as cool as I thought you would. Yeah. Oh, thank you. 
<laughs> but yeah, uh, it's just that I uh, like I said that aspect of uh, they're now hurting graphic or oh, not graphics now hurting gameplay in favor of graphics more and more and more. Yeah. It's like, for example, I'm not trying to insult this game because I know, I know for a fact Marcus enjoyed this game, and I'm not insulting it. But I've played a little bit of, like, I played that Human Duke's X Human Revolution, and hmm. I also, I've also, right. I've also had come in the post the other day. I rented, and I just played it. I like I played it today, and I've sent it back today. <laughs> the Last of Us. Hmm. Okay. I played it for like two <laughs> seconds or so. <laughs> Did it, did it have like, a mandatory I'm, install, real quick? I think it did. Okay, I so know, you spent I, more time installing it than you did actually playing it. I didn't, it's not like I played it for just two seconds. Oh, and okay. it. But my problem with that was, the gameplay was so, eh. It was just all graphics and story, like, look how good this person looks. Right. And I'm like, that's cool. But that would have been cooler if the gameplay had matched up. Mm. It's like, if you played God of War 3... Yes. Have you played God of War 1 and 2? Yes. How much longer were 1 and 2 to 3? Um, 1, yes. 2, yeah, I think 2, even 2 was longer. 1 was a lot longer than I thought it would be. Yeah, 1 and 2, it took me like a day and a half. It took me like a couple of days to complete them. I don't mean like in terms of I play 24-7, obviously. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in terms of a couple of hours. The third game, I sat down and I completed it in one fucking playthrough, almost. Yeah. It was too short. Most of it was made up of just cutscenes. And I'm like, you can't hurt gameplay for graphics. That's one of the reasons. Like, for example, the Skyward Sword game I was playing, cool. The gameplay seems pretty cool on that. Like that. But that's the problem that we, we seem to be running into. And another reason seems to be, for example racing games or shooter games in my opinion it's not always just a graphics v thing it's also a case of i reckon a load of developers don't include local multiplayer because hey richter would you like to would you like to play on i don't know trying to think of a trying to think of a game but you would use like I don't know, the grid mm-hmm. one because i think the first one didn't have much on the second one mm. i'm just going to use that as an example because okay. i wanted that game and i've heard it's fucking awesome did you want to play that game You'd be like, yeah, cool. I mean, you could be like, okay, you come to my house, we sit down, we play the game together, you never have to buy that game because you're enjoying it with me. Therefore, by not including local (laughs) multiplayer, if you want to play with me, (laughs) you have to go to the shop, buy the game, sit down at your house, and you can't just do it in the same room or anything. No, you have to literally fuck it. It gives them more money. I think that's maybe one of the main reasons for it. That could be. Well, uh, on a side note, at least personally... Uh, with the the graphics hurting the gameplay, I also feel that when they jack up the graphics, it that drives up the cost of the game and therefore you know exacerbates all their problems. <laughs> so I, I kind of wish they would focus a little bit less on, on graphics. Yep, it's like I've I've saw loads of people, for example, on that subject at E3 and stuff like that, mm-hmm. complaining that the Wii U was underpowered compared to PS4, mm-hmm. which, like I said. I don't care because on the PS4 games, well, I'm probably going to get a PS4, like I said. I, want, I like Knack and maybe one other game. The rest of them all looked too much like the same shit. Yeah. Whereas, like the, whereas like the Wii U, you've got like your Zeldas if you want your adventure games. You've got your Marios for your platformers. Then they've also got like the Metroid for other style of stuff, which they may be doing a shooter version of that in the future. If they go back to the Prime one, you've got like your Mario Kart for the kart racing, you got your fighters. You, you see what I mean? They've got more variety. It's not just all grey, generic looking shooter or grey, generic looking or shiny looking racer, I should say. Mm-hmm. Where, don't get me wrong, those genres work, and I enjoyed a load of those. I especially loved them during PS2. I just don't like them when they've removed local multiplayer. Well, I feel with the when they remove it because you know for the reason of you know oh I don't want to make it I don't want the graphics to suffer. My thought is well the the players doing that so if really they're making it ugly that's you know they they should just blame players. <laughs> Not like really but you know it's like you have to 
if you're just playing it by yourself, you're not going to notice that. If if the frame rate dips or the you know the quality goes down because you're playing split screen, you're probably not honestly going to notice it because you're probably going to be laughing and yelling at each other and you know just and that's player induced, quote unquote. So just they yeah. should throw it in there. <laughs> they should. It's like it's like with the thing of. Uh, the reason I mentioned shooters and racers isn't mm-hmm. because it's a bad genre. No. It's because those genres lended themselves most to multiplayer. Yes, they did. Because the, sh- the ones that lend themselves most to multiplayer, in my opinion, are shooter, racer, sports game, fighter. Those ones all definitely 100% need local multiplayer. Yeah. Action, adventure, and stuff like that, it depends on the game because some of them are just designed to be single-player games and no online. But then again, you can also have one where it's designed for like a two-player action adventure or platformer or whatever. But you know what I mean? It's not a staple yeah. of the yeah. genre. Yeah, like a, a fighting, a single-player fighting game would be like one of the craziest things. Single-player only would be crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, like those especially need. Well, uh, even more so with uh, online having lag. A lot of like something like a fighting game, you'd want local because you'd want people to be able to play it without you know having a, a server screwing up their combos and stuff. The kind of a more pure playing of it. Yep, I have a brilliant example of that. Mm-hmm. WWE. Mm. I played local multiplayer with WWE with the crispy. We played multiple times on local multiplayer on the wrestling game. Join like universe mode when we were a tag team and stuff like that. Fucking loved it. Online, because it was online, shit loads of problems. Like sometimes he wouldn't be able to connect, or sometimes during the match it would lag like fuck. Or, yeah. And it's like, no, you, you don't have the <laughs> lag and stuff. Yeah. But uh, any other closing thoughts on uh, the decline of local multiplayer? Uh, no, nope. okay. they just need to go back and start. <clears throat> I feel they need to start addressing local multiplayer because one of the things with it as well that people don't seem to realize, there's a big racket involved with this, I feel. I mean, I'm not trying to sound conspiracy theory-ish, but there's a reason they sell extra control pads. Yeah. It's like the PlayStation 3. Apparently, you could have, what was it, up to seven control pads active at once? Yes. No game had seven players local <laughs> multiplayer. <Yeah. laughs> Not that I know of, no. <laughs> and most of their big games were online only. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Little Big Planet and stuff like that had local multiplayer, but like God of War Ascension has multiplayer. <laughs> it's bad, but I'm just using that as an example since it's a Sony exclusive. It's online only. What the hell? <laughs> why sell extra pads if you're not going to... Pardon me. Why sell extra pads if you're not going to use them? Yeah. Well, my favorite was always seven. <laughs> like, not an even number. Even if, like, you could do seven, I don't see why you wouldn't just be like, ah, oh, just six, you know? <laughs> Unless the seventh is, like, a Blu-ray remote or whatever. <laughs> and you you do have a point there, because the Crispy's typing to us below. He's typed, they also break. He has a point... However, look at your PlayStation 3 pad if you currently have it in hand. It has a light indicator on it to show you what number player you are. <laughs> so, and weirdly, that doesn't go up to 7 either. Yeah. Now it's just silence? Yeah, well, I was waiting to see what he typed. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Call of Duty controller out the window. <laughs> That's the other thing with local multiplayer. If someone's trolling you, you can just reach over and smack someone. <laughs> see, the thing I find with local multiplayer as well, with sort of situations like that, mm-hmm. if someone's trolling you in local multiplayer... You know the person yeah. a lot more. I thought, you just laugh it off. Yeah. And yeah, I'm looking at my my camouflage dual shock control pad now, six axis. But yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, four little lights on it. Where's five, six, seven? <laughs> <laughs> well, after four, does it then suddenly light up like one and four? I don't know how that works. 
Actually, yeah, I could see that. It'd be like one and four is five, and then two and four is six. <laughs> yeah, but hmm. <laughs> I'm a gamer. We don't like maths. I know. I'm well. I I like some. That's why I play RPGs. But now I wish I had seven controllers just to try that out. Coming this year, maths of duty. <laughs> You shoot addition. <laughs> like, you shoot math symbols at them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I'm sick and tired of people throwing pie at me. <laughs> <laughs> Five, three, two. Uh, uh, minus. Yes. <laughs> uh, but no. How about you, Fallen Angel? Do you have any closing thoughts? That was fascinating. Yeah, he's he's doing an imitation of the game companies when they're <laughs> people are like, "Hey, are you gonna put in local?" Uh, but uh, yeah, I agree with you that they need to start addressing that. They they're kind of sweeping it under, like, "Oh yeah, no, nobody cares about that." When people still care about it, so if um, so, I guess this wraps up another uh, XGR. In the morning, <laughs> and a. Uh, as always, joining me was Chris, a.k.a. The Mole. And thank you. I will also say, yes, that's one of the things I'm worried about as well with the, quote, next generation, even though it's already gone because we got the Wii U. Right. But that's something I'm really worried about. Oh, just getting rid of local? Yeah, because look at the Xbox One adverts. Or, well, look at the Xbox One stuff now. It's all about like cloud gaming, which I think they've still got some elements of that. Yeah, and it's all about online stuff and all that. Whereas, and you look at the PS3 advert for the console. It was a guy sat down and this like hot chick pops up and like, oh yeah, you're playing Killzone, cool. Give me a sec, I'll join you. <laughs> Goes to the store, picks it up, puts it in. A couple of seconds later, oh hi, I've done it. <laughs> I'm ready to play you guys, and then she's instantly as good. <laughs> but I may have lost. Tr- train of what annoyed me with that but yeah <laughs> it was the fact they never once showed local multiplayer during any of their trailers yeah we're like all the wii commercials have it <laughs> yeah all the wii ones have except it. non-specific um, action figure <laughs> except for him and i think also we i also think xbox one may have shown multiplayer but only using connect mm. I never saw a video of two people sat down with the pads on the Xbox or two people sat down with the PlayStation 4 pads. Yeah. So it's like, oh god, it's going to be even worse next gen. Well, the Killer Instinct one did have two people theoretically playing it. <laughs> Should do it to fighting. Yeah. So but, that at least does, but... Yeah, that, that at least does, but... Because people say it's now closer to a PC's archetype. I'm worried now we're getting closer and closer to a PC's thing of... Let's not have local multiplayer, which they have a couple before people bitch and moan. But oh, some have them. They don't. Low PCs are not as good for local multiplayer. Period. Yeah. I agree. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah that, that, that that was my final, 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 okay. final list thought. <laughs> well, thank you. So that was uh, Chris A.K. the Mall, and uh, thank you for joining us, the Fallen Angel. That's all right. And uh, I thank you too. I am the stay at home dad gamer. See you next week. And special thanks to the Crispy for typing below. Oh, yes. Thank you, Crispy, for typing. <laughs>